Hey guys, today I'm gonna talk about scaffold db context command. This is also known as reverse engineering command, and if you wanna use it, you'll have to install Microsoft Entity Framework Core Tools. It connects to your database from the package manager console, and then it outputs db sets and models. We covered this in the last video, but the reason why I'm making this video is because it does not create a plural db set names property names and it will we had to pass connection string in the command instead of that what i want to do is i want to keep my connection string in app settings and then the property names of the db sets i want to make them plural so that it makes sense so that's what i'm going to cover today i'm going to first store my connection string in the app setting and use this connection string in scaffold db context command and then I'm gonna use a package to make my dbset property names plural. And then I'm gonna assume that uh, my database team made some modification in the database tables and I wanna see how it modifies my models and dbset if after I use scaffold db context com command. All right, let's jump into the demo. So in my last video, I talked, uh, I, you know, we ran this command where it uh, it said D, uh, scaffold db context, and then it took connection string as parameter, and then it took uh, uh, entity framework core um, SQL server data provider, and then it created the db context and models in this models directory. You can see that. Let's run this uh, command again and see what happens. So when I run it, it says that the files are already there. And if you wanna override these files, you can use force flag. So I'm gonna use force flag. And when I use force flag, it recreates all these files. And that's the reason it's not, and we'll have to do this multiple times during um, uh, the changes. If our database team changes something, we'll have to run this command again and we'll have to override these files. So it's never a good idea to write your logic in these files. I would inherit these files in my classes and make mo uh, make modification in those classes so that you don't lose your changes. All right, uh, you can see that now also I use connection string in my scaffold db context uh, command here. And in a db context class also, uh, it's using sensitive connection string in this class. So instead of that, the, um, the best thing to do is we can store our connection string in app settings and then use it from there. So to do that, first I'm gonna create um, a connection strings field here. And then I'm gonna say that I have a bookstores db connection, which is this. If you want to connect to bookstores db, this is what the connection string you should you should use. And if I want to use this connection string when I scaffold my database, well, the only thing that I need to do is I will have to get rid of this connection string. We are not using any sensitive connection string now. And then I'm going to use dash connection connection parameter and say that use this this connection string from app settings instead so when i hit enter it will recreate my db context and now you can see that in my db context instead of writing that sensitive connection string now it's using use sql server name bookstores db and it recreated my models <clears throat> so this is how you can store connection string in app settings and scaffold your database all right but you can still see that our db set names are not plural to do that what i did i i'm going to install a package uh, which is written by this um, bryce lamson person and uh, it has 42,000 uh, downloads as of now. And if you wanna check out his GitHub repository, you can totally go and check it out. If you're afraid of your sensitive information in your database, um, yeah, the good idea is to go and check out the source code and make sure he's not doing anything funky. 
Uh, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna install this package. The best thing about this package is the only thing to uh, to get my DB set property names to plural names. I'll just have to rerun the scaffold DB context command again. And now you can see in my DB context, the DB set names are plural, which makes sense, right? Because it stores multiple authors and that's what it, that's what the name should be. Cool. All right, so this is how you can uh, make your DB set names plural. Now let's assume that my database team is going to make some changes in um, make some changes in my tables. You can see that the author does not have email address, so we're gonna add email address, and we do not need this minimum level and maximum level in our job table. And uh, I wanna change the property type, the data type of this table, this royalty percentage from tiny integer to integer. So they gave me a query to run my database team. Let's assume that the, my database team gave me a query to run, which will add a table email address in my author, remove this minimum and maximum level from job, and change the data type of royalty percentage in book author table to integer. Cool. Let's run this. Okay, so the query worked. Uh, when I refresh my connection, you can see that these columns are added and job does not have those columns anymore. And my, my book author table now has royalty percentage integer now. Okay, but my models are not updated. You can still see my author table still does not have email address field property. And my job table still has minimum and maximum uh, columns uh, properties in this file. And my book author still says royalty percentage takes byte as data type. So the only thing that I need to run, I just need to run my scaffolding again. And then it will update my models. Now, if I go to my author, you can see email address added in my mod uh, model and my job does not have minimum and maximum properties anymore. And my book author has integer, nullable integer as uh, the data type now. So this is how you can, uh, if your database team updates your database uh, schema of your tables, then you can just rerun, rerun your uh, scaffold DB context um, command and update your, update your models in DB context. Um, you, there are more uh, parameters that you can pass to make your uh, DB context and models look nicer and organized. You can also pass this context parameter to name uh, your DB context. You can also pass these tables to just scaffold particular tables from the database. And you can also pass the schema, uh, a particular schema from the database that you want to um, uh, want to scaffold. So there are other parameters that you can check out too. I'm going to share this link in the video description. And in my next video, I'm going to talk about how we can, um, how we can uh, pull and update this database using this HTTP, um, HTTP methods. I'm going to show all um, get, post, put, delete all those API calls and then we will call our um, entity framework functions to update the database, uh, data in the database. So yeah, stay tuned. Thanks for watching this video. Bye.